We're just a month into the 2023 season for college football, and it's time to take a look at who's overrated and who's underrated. There are some teams that really tell on themselves and some teams that people are sleeping on. Today, we take a look at 10 that fit in each category and break down why they are there. Start with the USF Bulls. I think that even though they're 2-2, two and two, this was a team that put up a strong performance against Alabama. Yes, you can make the excuse that Alabama is still trying to figure things out on both offense and and well, really mostly on offense, just with the quarterback position and offensive line. But this is a team that is a, a lot better than people give them credit for. They held Alabama to just 17 points. And then they followed that up with a really explosive win over Rice. I think that Byron Brown is a really explosive player. I think that he's a, a quality player at quarterback. And I think that this offense appears to be in good hands. Now that, that Alex Golish is running the show. A team within that conference that is overrated is the SMU Mustangs. I think a lot of people expected them to be a contender in the AAC, and they still very much could do that. But so far, we expected bigger things from them against better competition. You look at what they did against Oklahoma and TCU. They got outscored 62-28. to 28. That's not exactly a strong performance that you want to see from them. And like I said, they could still contend – for the AAC, but in terms of feeling confident about if they made the New York Six Bowl game, I think that you're feeling that they are very much overrated. Miami sits at 4-0, and they're still very much underrated, given that Florida State appears to have the top of the ACC locked up right now. This is a team that is still has a lot to prove. I think that they have a lot of exciting things going for them. This is an offense that appears to be explosive with Shannon Dawson running the show, and this defense appears to be much better than we anticipated. We knew they were very talented, but so far they have done the job. Tyler Van Dyke appears to be back to his original form, which we expected him to be an NFL draft prospect, maybe even the first round, and he appears to be back on track with that. The team that's overrated is the Clemson Tigers, 2-2 two and two now with losses to Duke and Florida State. It appears that this defense is still solid at times, but also gives up some big plays. The offense continues to try and figure things out, seems more explosive as of late. The fact that they're two and two right now says, says a lot about where this team is and maybe where they're headed. I think the biggest thing for the long term is whether or not Davos Sweeney learns his lesson about utilizing the transfer portal. I think, yes, you're doing a great job of recruiting, but in order to find depth and players that can fill some holes that you need, you're looking at the transfer portal for that. And we kind of saw Florida State's advantage there where they had some pieces, they had some positions that they needed help, and they addressed that in transfer portal. And some people might believe that that was the difference in the game. Neil Brown came into the season with his job uh, on the line almost. His seat was pretty hot, and he has responded quite well. Three and one start for the West Virginia Mountaineers. And they have done it by playing better defense than most people expected. They just found a way to beat Texas Tech 20 to 13. And despite the game wasn't close against Penn State, but they played really good defense. They gave Penn State everything they could and more. And obviously it didn't go their way, but they still found ways to play really good defense. Now they have to figure things out offensively they have to find a way to get the quarterback position healthy and more consistent but i think overall you're seeing a west virginia team that is on the way up this one might be a little controversial given that oklahoma is four and zero, and they're averaging almost 47 points per game but when you look at the quality of competition that they play versus arkansas state and tulsa they outscored those two teams 139 to 17 against smu and cincinnati two teams that are not exactly elite SMU is two and two. Cincinnati just lost to Miami of Ohio. I think that you're looking at a 48 to 17 margin of victory between those two teams. And I think that you're seeing there are some concerns with Oklahoma. Yes, we see that the defense is better than expected, but the offense appears to have some hiccups and they got to get those figured out if they want to compete in the Big 12. Maryland's off to a 4-0 start, and yes, we've seen them struggle at this point in the past, but I think this is a different year for them. Maybe not contending in the Big 10 East, but it feels like they're playing with a lot of confidence. Talia Tagovailoa off to a good start, 1,100 yards, eight touchdowns. He needs to be a key piece going forward, and the defense appears to be stepping up in a big way too. They lost a number of key pieces, but so far, the replacements have stepped up in a big way. Tareeb still is one of those guys, three interceptions on the year already. The Terrapins, like I said, have their hands full, given the teams that they have to play in Penn State, Michigan, and Ohio State. But they have a chance to show 
that they are better than people expected. Even though they sit at 4-0, another team that's 4-0 that I think is overrated is the Ohio State Buckeyes. I think that their performance against Notre Dame, yes, it was a gritty win, and they found ways to win that football game. I think that their struggles, if Kyle McCord can't get things figured out, then this could be a long year. The defense appears to be better, and the talent level on offense is really good. It's just that the quarterback position and the offensive line need to step up. So I think you need to see some things going forward for them to be considered a legitimate contender for a national championship. You look at what they did against Youngstown State in Western Kentucky, 98 to 17 margin of victory against Indiana, teams that appear to be not very good, and Notre Dame just 40 to 17. So they have to get that figured out if they want to be a legitimate contender. If not for a Curtis Rourke injury, Ohio might be the only 5 and 0 team in college football right now. This is a team that we expected to do really good things offensively, and they've done that at times, but it's their defense that has actually stepped up. They had a big win against Iowa State, 10-7, to and Curtis Rourke, when he's played, has been really fun to watch. This offense still has a number of pieces that can be explosive. It's just that the injuries really hurt them, and if Rourke can stay healthy, this is a team in the MAC, a conference that appears to be an underrated conference, could be a really entertaining year for that entire group. This shouldn't be surprising. Iowa is overrated at three and one, mostly because this offense is very frustrating to watch. And while there's probably not going to be anything done about it in terms of uh, making a change, it still makes them one of the most overrated teams in college football. The defense does so much work for the offense just to struggle as much as it does. And that's really frustrating if you're on that end of the football. And that's going to cost Iowa games against lesser competition. The defense can only do so much before the offense has to do its part. And so far, it's simply not. Fresno State sits 4-0 with two Power 5 wins. And this is a team that appears to be on a mission in the Mountain West, a conference that appears to be deeper than we expected. Mikey Keene has been one of the best additions for any program in the transfer portal. And he has been really fun to watch over 1200 yards and 12 touchdowns already. His favorite target, Eric Brooks, who hadn't had the greatest numbers coming into this year is off to a monster start with 448 yards and four touchdowns. The defense is also doing its part and it's been a really fun team to watch a team that you could definitely see competing for that new year's six spot after losing to Ohio state. It feels like Notre Dame continues to be one of the most overrated programs in college football. Sam Hartman appears to be a good addition but it didn't really matter against Ohio State. Yes, Ohio State's defense is very good, but and it's another big game loss for Notre Dame. It feels like anytime this team has the opportunity to win a big game against a top 10 team, they just simply don't get it done, and they did that once again this weekend. Wyoming sits at 3-1, and one, and though their one loss to Texas, the margin was a lot bigger than the game actually indicates. This is a team that I think you have to pay attention to in the Mountain West. You'd like to see the points against go down, obviously, and you'd like them to find a way to get their own points up more. And I think having a healthy quarterback plays a huge role in that. But this defense is much better than people give them credit for. I think when you're looking at long term for the rest of this season, the Wyoming Cowboys are definitely a team that can compete for a Mountain West championship. Boise State sits at two and two, and we're really just watching Ashton Genty carrying the offense. That passing attack still has not arrived. The, the rushing attack is the only thing that this offense appears to have. And a lot of that falls on Taylor Green, but you're looking at a defense that's also not doing its part. 30.8 points per game, that's not going to get the job done. That's not going to help them with their their quest to win the Mountain West. Like I just said, this is a conference that is absolutely deep and loaded. So against FPS competition, they're getting outscored 105 to 69. So you're going to have to find ways to keep that other team off the scoreboard and find a way to balance your offense a little bit. Washington State just had a big win against Oregon State. They are 4-0 on the season, averaging nearly 46 points a game. The defense obviously is very feast or famine, but last week against Oregon State, they were very much in feast mode for the first half. Second half, a little bit more of that famine that we saw, but this is a group that can make an impact. And Cam Ward right now playing lights out over 1,300 yards and 13 touchdowns. The Cougars in a Pac-12 conference that is very deep appear to have a chance to be a sleeper team in the Pac-12 race. Overrated team, and not necessarily because of the offense, is USC. Lincoln Riley can 
call a great offense. The offense is averaging 55 points per game, and this is a team that knows how to put points on the scoreboard. Caleb Williams, over 1,200 yards, 15 touchdowns, and they're doing exactly what they need to do. It's just that the defense is going to cost them a game. The fact that they cannot figure things out under Alex Grinch, the same issues keep arising. There's no consistency on that side of the ball is going to cost them in games. And the fact that they have Colorado, Notre Dame, Utah, Washington, Oregon, and UCLA left leads me to believe that one of these games is going to push them over the edge and it's going to be the defense that costs them. The offense can only do so much. And yes, you should expect this offense to put up points, but at a certain point you will expect your defense to help you out. And I don't know if you can trust them to do that right now. Utah just found a way to win a football game essentially without an offense. And while that is a joke, the offense needs to figure things out, but this is still very much an underrated team who still does not have its starting quarterback in Cam Rising. Nate Johnson has been serviceable at times for this offense, but they still do not have a formidable passing attack, at least a consistent one. It's lucky for them their defense is elite, and they showed that and on full display this past weekend with their huge win over UCLA. The UCLA team did come into the year with high goals and big aspirations, and while they still can contend for a Pac-12 championship, it appears that they still are a little ways from getting things going. Dante Moore struggled mightily against Utah's defense, and they really hope they don't face a Utes defense in the future. Three and one so far, and their defense appears to be better, but right now it feels like until they can figure things out and get more consistent play from their quarterback, this will be a slightly overrated team. Missouri survived against Memphis, 134 to 27, took care of business. They sit 4-0, and they're in a good position in the SEC East with Georgia clearly at the top and nobody with a clear number two. Missouri could be the team that surprises people. Brady Cook has stepped up in a big way over the past two games. For the season, over 1,000 yards and seven touchdowns. His favorite tar target, Luther Burden, continues to do a lot of damage, and the defense is doing its part as well. And finally, the last overrated team is the Tennessee Volunteers. They are 3-1 and one on the year, and they took care of business against bad teams, and then they just struggled against Florida. I think that everyone was looking at Joe Milton to see what he could do. And it's not necessarily that he is making wrong reads or anything. It's just that we haven't seen this offense be as explosive as it was last year. And right now you have the feeling that this is a slightly overrated team until further notice.